it's me Renee I'm back so today I said I'm gonna do a <coughs> sorry a video of my favorite series I've seen this I suppose this is not like an original video it's like booktubers do things like this like my favorite books favorite series I recently saw this on Mara's from books like whoa series uh, sorry sorry channel she's done she did in November she did favorite books and then yesterday she put out day before recently she put out favorite series what she did she ended up ranking them yeah I love ranking them but really it's impossible to rank your favorite series impossible I suppose you could if someone's forcing you pick a favorite top three but you, 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 you can't rank them all I mean my babies you, no no it's not possible so yeah here's a list of 10 of my absolute favorite books sorry book series I'll have my favorite books in another video and yeah uh, so I'm just gonna pick them up and just gonna tell you why they're one of my favorites and the order of them really aren't really that important. I suppose the one or two of them might be important, but no, no, honestly, no, no. Because if the order of one of them is important, then that means that the third place is first place because blah 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 blah. And no, no, I can't rank them. Don't do this to me, Booktube. That's torture. You can't torture people. That's against the Geneva, Geneva Convention. Can't do it! Can't do it! Want out! So yeah, so yeah. Here are 10 books that I absolutely love. And yeah, uh, I'll link them all in the blue. And I suppose, yeah, um, my hair is a bit wacky. I decided to film my hair today because I wanted to already film the video celebrating my 50 subscribers. This video will probably not go up today, like, well, I'm filming it, the day I'm filming it. But yeah, uh, that's why my hair is curly. Uh, and yeah, I did it myself, so it's not made perfect. But hey, who is? When is your hair perfect? When are you doing it yourself? I don't really think it ever is really. And hey, if you want to see a perfect, a perfect, beautiful person, you don't go to my channel. I don't have the best lights, I don't have the best uh, audio or Mike, I'm the best audio. I don't have a mic. Uh, I'm not perfect. And really, that's fine for me. My uh, goal is to share my reading joy. And you don't need perfect hair or makeup to do that. So yeah, here I am. And yeah, that's been an intro on four mon months, minutes, almost. Books. So you're here, aren't you? Isn't it? Sorry. So yeah, and let's start. Let's start randomly here. Not like this before, but yeah, of course I would have talked about some of these books before. Obviously, oh, that would be weird having a book channel for half a year and not talking about any of my favorite books. But yeah, okay, let's get to the book. All right, no more deep level. So the first series is Shamer's Daughter or Scumber and Sutter by Lena Kobel. Kobelbun, 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 oh, sorry, she's Danish, and we Norwegians and the Swedish often, uh, and the Swedes often, uh, uh, we often tease them because they talk so weird, or they talk like special, in at least now, it's like, it's kind of like Danish sounds to our ears, so, yeah, that's probably not right, but her name's Lena Kobelbun, Kobelbun, might be right, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, it's a middle grade series actually, about the series. It came out in actually early 2000s, so it's actually quite, well, sorry, quite old. It's not old, early 2000s. It's not completely new, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, to my knowledge at least, I wouldn't say that a book that came out in 2002 is old. It's not new, but old, when you say something is old, I feel like, like it's outdated, it's bad, it's forgotten, it's unrelevant, and that's not this series at all. 
So yeah, uh, what's about uh, it's a high fantasy series about Dina. Uh, both Dina and her mom has a magical ability to look in, when they look into your eyes, they see all that you're shamed for, all that uh, things that makes you ashamed. So like if if you lied to someone, if you murdered someone, all the things that you're shameful for, they can look into your eyes and see them, all your secrets. So yeah, that's quite a unique and special ability really. So of course because of that, they're ostracized in their community. They live in a community, uh, Dina has brothers and sisters. Her dad she's never met, so she doesn't really have a dad. Uh, but yeah, uh, but, but it's just her and her mom who they can have half less the ability. And pretty early on in the series, start, things start to heat up and stuff really, really happens and stuff really, really... Uh, I was thinking about a word and forgot it. It's not a video with me without me forgetting a word, is so now? No, it's not. Well, anyway, it's a really great series. It's actually been translated to English and Norwegian and yeah, all the languages, so don't like be like, oh! It's no original book, how am I supposed to read this book? No, you can probably get it in your language. Well, I don't know if it's like in all languages, but it's in a lot of languages. So I think you can probably uh, read this one, at least in English. So yeah. And it's actually also four books in the series. There's actually also two movies based on the series. Uh, I haven't seen the last movie, I've seen the first one, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely check it out. It was really, um, really powerful, uh, it was really emotional, it was really important, let's just say important. It was really important to me in my early teens, which is when I read it. And yeah, one of my early favorite book, favorite series. And hoping by showing this on my channel to my 50 subscribers, some people out there will pick it up and it'll become your favorite ones as well, hopefully. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Yes. Yeah, let's go here. As I said, I don't really have a system. I'm just gonna pick books at random. Let's close them. Oh, not books at random, but like the books that the top top ten. They're all here. I'm just gonna talk about them randomly in order. Randomly in order. In a random order. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. I did have like a he prepared earlier for like the other video I did. Of course, I forgot completely about uh, about it, so I just drank it because like oh, my tea. And now it's empty. And yeah, I'm probably gonna make more, but yeah, that's that. Yeah, on my tea questions, but yeah. The next up is the girl is. <laughs> I was about to say the trilogy, duology by Catherine Miller Haynes. It's a, uh, it's a mystery series, why a mystery, or my why a mystery historical, because it's set during the Second World War. So it's kind of fun, you have, like, you have the Second World War in the background. Not, it takes place, like, it's YA, so it take, well, it's not obvious, but it takes place in the US, so they don't, don't really have, like, the war in their faces. But the war affects people, like, in, in, this, in this world. So it's still there, like, in their lives. Uh, and yeah, honestly, I would say, like, thank Veronica Mars, but just, like, historical. Because the main character has only one parent. The main character is a uh, private eye. The main character is sassy. The main character is ostracized because of issues. And yeah, just very, very good. I read the first book, The Girl is Murder, uh, I think, like, two or three years ago. I don't remember one, I'll check it out. Highly enjoyed it and didn't get to the second one before last uh, year. Got to it and my god, I cried. It was just so dang emotional. All the feels, all the emotions. And yeah, it's just highly, highly recommended. Definitely check it out. Very good. K series. K series. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot the S there. We are going to go with, uh, let's go here. So, this one, and I think I don't have, I think I haven't talked about this that much. A bit, but not that much. So, yeah. And next series I want to talk about is 
Vampire Academy. So, back in 2010, I was a young girl. Well, not I'm old now. Well, I, okay. I was younger. Uh, I was looking for a book to read. I was like in a semi slump. I had found some books for some years, but like, because like there was a period because between I was like ten till twelve that uh, didn't really find that many books, and I found more books between thirteen and sixteen, but then I had like a slight slump where I didn't really find any good books. And then I was buying books on Amazon. I had recently bought Ellen Scribers, I think Scribers is her last name is, called Vampire Kisses, which is vampires, but that's more or less the only thing I have in common. Uh, and then Amazon said like, well, you read this, you should buy this. So I bought the first two books in the Vampire Academy series. I... Stuff is happening here. Yeah. Uh, I uh, read the first book. I thought, hmm, interesting. I'm liking you. And then like the, the ending of it is like, oh my god. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm going to read the next book. I read the next book. And that ending killed me, killed me, oh my god, oh my god, yeah, it's just so, so emotional, and I was like, yeah, um, I need the next book now, and I remember, I don't really remember where I got the third book, if I bought it online, and maybe I found it in a book somewhere, I'm not sure, but I think I got it pretty soon afterwards, and I remember being in, I was uh, reading it while I was on my way to uh, summer vacation. I was sitting in a uh, air. I was about to say airplane. Could have been that as well. In an airport, I was reading the end of Shadow Quest, and I was just starting crying because the end of it was like I just cried. And then, like when I when I closed the book, it was just like oh 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 my god. I was just in shock. I was just so I was just stunned to silence because the ending was like my. God, so like the, I think maybe for the first like five hours of here of the plane trip, I was just didn't say a word. I was just, oh my God, what, 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 what? I was just so, so shocked, so shocked. And yeah, I suppose you probably know what I'm talking about, but yeah, that really is a very <laughs> intense reading experience, really. And yeah, um. Yeah, after that, I just swallowed the rest of the series. So they like, I need them all! I mean, need them all! Need them all! Um, yeah, I actually think, I'm pretty sure, actually, only the only book I had to wait for was Last Sacrifice. Because I'm pretty sure the other books were out already. At least most, maybe, maybe, maybe Spirit's Bound had been out. I think maybe Spirit Bound hadn't been published yet, no. But the others were out, so like most of them I got the mint, like, uh, mint I needed them, but like some of them I had to wait for, and like oh, the wait was so difficult, so difficult. And yeah, um, yeah, this series has yes, a special place in my heart. It got me out of a reading slump, and out of, after reading these books, people who read these books gave me recommendations to other books, and I, I think it's probably random, but like after I read this series, I found lots of other good series. Coincidentally, coincidentally, accidentally, and at the same time, so it just kind of opened a whole new world to me, like reading-wise. And I love the series in itself. And I also I found lots of friends through this fandom. And Angela, hi. And yeah, it's just amazing series. I just highly, highly recommend it. It's just so good. And I suppose you could just also mention it's there's also a Vampire Academy Ultimate Guide, which has like facts and quizzes and stuff. So that's really cool, at least for me. A big diehard VA fan. And then you have also this Vampire Academy 10th Anniversary Edition, which has the first book, but also has like short series, no, short series, short stories at the end of it. So yeah, very, very cool. And yeah, Vampire Academy. It's just so dang. Good. Check it out. Check it out. I think I think I only know like two or three people ever who said like they didn't like it at all. I think most people had some enjoyment of it. And yeah, should definitely definitely check it out. It's very, very, very good. And also 
yeah, it has diversity, it has uh, feminism, it has uh, fights, uh, impossible love, and just everything you want, really. I suppose the only thing it doesn't have, sadly, is LGBTQ plus characters. Well, not like, they're not confirmed anyway. Though Bloodlines have, so that's cool. Bloodlines, which is the spin off series. And yeah, even though, yeah, Bloodlines I also really enjoy. Though it didn't make the list because I suppose Vampire Academy to me is like slightly more important and more good. So yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot to say like, these are 10 books that I love. Yeah, I do have other uh, favorite series. But like, when you read as much as I do, you get a lot of favorite series. And if I was going to talk about all of them, I would be here all year, really. Uh, so I end up having to having to say off some, pick some books and prioritize down prioritize someone. And uh, that's just really how it is. I might, I might do a video in the future where like I do like the. Uh, almost per almost the favorite list well, like they they didn't make the list but they, like they were almost at their favorite favorite list my dude if you want that but yeah yeah so let's move on i just started but yeah we want to talk about 10 books on my favorite series of course this video is gonna take some time it's gonna be big and long but entertaining i think yeah, I mean, who doesn't love to see people talk about their favorite books? Their favorite books! No one. No one. Who doesn't? I don't think anyone does really. I don't think anyone does like that. But yeah, uh, let's get to another series. Let's go with these books. So, Spell Dug with Pleasant by Derek Landy. So, uh, this is a middle grade series. It's, uh, let's say high fancy, it's not high fancy, it's in our world, it's urban fancy. It takes place in our world in Ireland, but also like in a magical city, Royal Haven. So it has like some, well, some magical places, but like mostly it takes place in our world. It's very like based in our world. Um, it's just, <sighs> where to start, where to start? Uh, I suppose for once the covers are just all so amazing, it's so colourful and lifelike and uh, it's just so detailed and so, so cool. Um, I suppose more than like, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, one, of the few, one of the few issues or the downsides with this series, at least for me, is because some parts of them can be kind of scary, though I just kind of as I do uh, read scary stuff, I just skip them. I don't like scary, scary, scary bits. I like exciting bits, but like when stuff is like scary, scary, like when it's torture, I don't, I just skip them. But yeah, um, this series still. It has LGBTQ plus people. It has diversity in ethnicity. It has neurodiversity. It has just all, all the characters. And the villains are just so fun. Some of them are like evil, like pure evil, and some are evil in a fun way, and they're just so good. And I, yeah, actually, also, one of the things I love about series is like it's never, never predictable. You know, actually, actually, I would say like the only thing you can say about this series, you know, it's gonna be fun, you know, stuff is gonna happen, and you know, there's gonna be words in it, and that's it, really. You don't really know that much else. You know this. It's gonna have chapters, and it's gonna be a first chapter, a second chapter, and a last chapter. But it's impossible, I tell you, impossible to predict the series and what's gonna happen. It's impossible. Even though, yeah, it includes prophecies and stuff like that. Just you can't, you can't for life of you guess what's going on in series. It's so so impossible to so unpredictable, so damned unpredictable. It's just. It's just so, so, so good. Definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, it has so, so much humor, so much humor. It's just so good. And then, uh, I think one of the things... Oh, yeah. It's one there. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little side thing to myself, actually. I think one of the um, things that uh, I really love about this series also is, like, 
all the characters, sorry, characters, all the all the chapters have uh, names, and the chapters also have like illustrations from the beginning. So it's just it's just so much gooiness about this series, and it's just so so good. Uh, I found this actually, yeah, it was kind of side notes, not side notes. I was recommended this book by a friend in 2012, yeah, 12, 11, no, 12, 12, yeah. And um, yeah, it's written for kids because publishers has to put like a uh, age on it and it says like t 9 to 10. But honestly, like in one of these books, uh, the villains, they throw, they use a decapitated head as a football. So I'm not sure really if you want to give that to your nine year old, 12 year old, yeah, nine year old, eight year old, I would say that's a bit too young, really. Uh, and yeah, uh, so yeah, I side note oh, slightly over, forgot to do what I was going on, but yeah, um, so yeah, anyway, I read this, started the series when I was 20, 20, so it's like over the age limits, but I wasn't really because it was just so so amazing and it doesn't feel childish at all. Like, the only aspect that's why it's for nine kids is because the protagonist starts at, at, as an 11 year old. But that's it. From the beginning, it's just so, so uh, advanced and adult and mature. And it's just, it's just so good. So, so good. I just absolutely love it. I suppose now, mostly though now I'm a bit tired of it because the last two books have been amazingly scary. So I like, have to like, I had to skip a lot of the book because it's just so, so scary. But still, there's still so much of this universe and these characters that I love that, yeah, I probably will finish this series because it's just so good. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, there's actually two series. There's the, there's the main series and then you have a spin-off series. The spin-off series is ongoing and the main series is finished, so you know that. Uh, there's nine books in the first series. I think the second book series is getting nine books as well. Not sure. And um, yeah, let's move on. Skullduggy Pleasant, Derek Landy. Check it out. Cool. Yeah. And then, sorry, camera. I just got hitting the camera there. Sorry. Forgot that you're saying there. Forgot that you're saying there. That's pretty good, really, when you book tour so long, you forget about the camera at all. But yeah. Um, yeah. The next series, Darker Days, or just Acardo. Acardo? Acardo? Now I'm just suddenly saying sounds. But yeah. Um, this is another one of those actually lovely, lovely Veronica Marsh uh, um, vibes books, really. And it's actually been described as Veronica Marsh plus Supernatural, which I think is kind of right, because you have the Supernatural, so <coughs> Supernatural, you have the, you have the Veronica Marsh aspect where the protagonist is a part eye, her uh, dad is actually out of the picture, her mom is in the picture. And, uh, but you also have the magic aspect of it, and it's sassy. Uh, there's mysteries, both uh, mortal and uh, immortal mysteries, like both magical and not magical. And yeah, it's just so, so good. So far, it's just two books. I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the author said it was supposed to be three books, at least more than these two. So far, there's just these, these two books, though, so buy them! If everyone just buys them, maybe you should have like five books more out next year. Wheels, wheels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, in other words, this is a video of me both reading my, my series and also like saying read it and like saying offers write more. And yeah, crazy passionate fangirling going on. And yeah, this book series is just so good. And also, the cover is so beautiful. I love all the covers and colors in this cover. It's just so, so nice. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next series. What is 
Yes. <laughs> so now you might be a bit baffled because like what? We just hang in there, hang in there. So this one, Evna by Stephen Peterson. My think like what? That's just one book, House and Series. It's a bind up. No, um, it's actually the last book in the series. I just actually just actually, just, actually blah, blah, blah. I actually just own this one book, even though I love this series. I read the first two books in the series uh, from the library. I got them from the library. Now, just haven't really gotten around to buying the first two books, really. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, this book series. Think of All of the Rings, but for girls. I suppose that's kind of weird because it's quite a weird way to describe it. But like, yeah. It's high fantasy, and there's protagonist is a girl, and the world is so huge, and just all the stuff is happening, and yeah, it's just lots and lots of stuff happening, really, and uh, yeah, it's just very, very good. And yeah, actually, <clears throat> uh, so, so far, well, as you might see and guess, I suppose, it's actually written by a Norwegian. Yay, Norwegian authors! Making amazing stuff sometimes! Really, really amazing stuff. But it's actually already been translated to Russian, Finnish, Danish, Swedish, German. It's I think it's out in Portuguese. Maybe it's coming out. Uh, I know it's out in Italian. I think it's coming out in Spanish. And from next year, it's coming out in English. Yeah, all you English speaking people will get to enjoy this series. It's just so so good. Just wait for the fields. It's just so, so good. Also, also, story time. So yeah, um, this book, it actually came out in, what, May I think maybe like, yeah, 2015. My god, five years. Oh, was. But yeah, while this book came out, like the year it came, year came out, I was studying. I was actually my first year doing the degree in library and information science. And the author had a signing, which I went to. So it's signed! So cool. And yeah, the signing, like, story time. I was like, because of this book, like, because this book was the last trilogy, and because of this book is such a phenomenon in Norway, actually, as was like in Scandinavia, like, it's just phenomenal, really. Uh, not only did she do a signing, she had a signing where you also had. Uh, you got free soup. You, I think, I think that's what cake as well. At least, yeah. And with the was soup, remember there was soup, both vegetarian, vegetarian and wood meats. So yay, vegetarian options. There was uh, speeches by other authors that read her books, and there were speeches by her. There were cosplay, uh, cosplay um, words, cosplay competitions. It was just all the stuff, really. It's just so. So fun. And uh, yeah, that night really it was just a highlight, really. Uh, I went to, yeah, was that, I went to that signing, just a very, very nice time. Though, uh, because of like this being the last book and because of this being where I studied, I kind of like forgotten to reread the series bef before this came out. So I went through the signing and then I saw all the cosplays and thought, like, hmm, who are you? Who are you? I just it's been so long since I've read the first two books, I kind of forgotten a lot of the characters. So that's kind of a brain fart. But still, it was just highly, highly enjoying to be there. It's so, so fun. And yeah, also like, has a map on the inside! And uh, yeah, she just says like, Dear Renee, thank for you, uh, thank, thanks for, for coming with me to the end. Because it's the last book. All well. City, and it's just yeah, well, well price protection truly really. so so nice. <sighs> just definitely check uh, read this series really. You know what? That's gonna be a goal really. That's probably gonna be a video in the future, uh, which we're we'll rereading this year's rest of the year. And um, yeah, and also it has like a fun bookmark thingy. I just really like this thingy. And uh, yeah, we'll just move on to the next series. Should not forget the other books really. No, nope, you should not. Then we have where to from here. Let's go with this one. 
This is actually a book series I've talked about recently, but hey, a good series can never be talked about too much. No, it can't. So, this is a soul, I suppose it's a soulless series. I suppose that's it also, because soulless is the first book in the series, but it's, it's called the Parasol Protector series, actually. It's actually a adult uh, steampunk series. I suppose if you pay attention, you kind of know that I read mostly young adults or middle grade. Though, though I do read some adult series now and then. This was actually one of the first adult series, adult series that I loved. So that's kind of the reason why it's on this list. Also other reasons because it's just so goddamn good. It has vampires and werewolves in the same universe, which I, I just love when books have like... It's not like, in this book, will exist, or like, this book, what does exist? No, they have several creatures in the same universe. It's just, it's so cool, so cool! And it's also set in the past, so we have like the fun costumes and stuff, and society stuff, that's really cool. cool. I really love historical books and historical dramas, so yeah, that's really cool, like, cool for that aspect. You have uh, also have like she has actually also made up like new creatures in a way, or new, yeah, I would say creatures in a way. Like the protagonist is soulless, which means she actually has no soul, as the name uh, presumes really. Uh, so she can act, uh, also like uh, touch the werewolves, and she becomes no, and she, and when she touches them, they become human while she touches them. So that's quite fun, really, and dangerous for them. And yeah, and this book seems really it's uh, it has lots of spy, it has lots of mystery, it has lots of world building, and it's just so good. It has LGBTQ plus characters, so that's great. It has diverse characters of ethnicity. It has feminism and uh, kick ass girls, and just yeah, everything, everything. It's just so. So, so good. So good. Uh, and yeah, so I suppose you might be like, what is the book missing? Because there's five books in the series. I have the four of the first book, but it's lent out to a friend. So I haven't gone back. Actually, don't remember which friend I wrote it to. Probably gonna have to buy another cover uh, edition, but I don't really mind that at all. But yeah. This series, though, it's just so, so good. So comfortable and so yummy, and also like if you enjoy this, you have other books in the same universe, and it's just yeah, it's just so good, so so damn, so goddamn good. So actually, now we're soon to finish. Just three more. That's good for you, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a good video to see. But yeah, at uh, the moment, I'd say like, should I pause you because I kind of want to take a little pause, but you know what, I'm not going to do that. Oh, you know what, yes, I'm going to get some video, some video, <laughs> I'm going to get some video, on the video, I'm going to get some tea. I'll see you later. Hey, I'm back. So yeah, I just need a little break. So this is part two, two, season four, sorry, two, of the... Amazing, absolute favorite book series video. So, closing down to the end here. This time, I'm going with Guardians of Time. So, uh, this series, this series, darling, really dogs, really holds a special place in my heart. So, so place in my heart. It's just so good. Uh, both like the book and like the Connects around the book. Okay, so I uh, actually found, well, I suppose this is kind of a bit of a topic, but like I found the first book of this author in a flea market, read it, loved it when I was like 12, had been going for like a uh, ring slump ish for like two years. So, like, oh my god, authors are amazing, they are such a thing, it's like amazing books. And then I thought I had to have her other books, so I Actually, found the series, the trilogy, of these books in uh, the store because that summer, not so summer after that, actually went to England. So yeah, a bowl of books that summer, a 
both some books that summer, and I bought these books, read them while on vacation, I was just so engrossed, it was just, they were so, so good, and actually, I kind of think I lost the count of how many times I reread it over the years, because it's just so readable, so rereadable, and readable as well, and uh, yeah, it sparked my, it, it reintroduced me to my love of reading, it introduced me to time travel, it's a time travel series, and it has a big, uh, big. It's a big reason why time travel is my favorite subgenre or trope, trope subgenre. I love time travel. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Here. Time travel is the best. And uh, also, like the characters, like the the books, the series is also told in multiple multiple point of views. So we have one point of view from Ethan. One point of view from Isabel, and then you might have like uh, a few pages actually from uh, villain's point of view. So that's kind of fun, but it's like more vague, and and you have prophecies, and you know, you have this stuff like prophecies, like oh my god, prophecies. But it's just done so amazing. So like I think this is the reason really why I don't really hate any tropes because most tropes can be done amazing, and this one just the prophecies so good. It's just. So, so good. And I just, yeah, it's just so, so amazing. It's just an amazing series, really. It both has levity, but it's also like serious and real, and uh, it has romance, it has friendship, it has family stuff, and just all the books really stuff you need in a book. All those stuff, and it's just so good. And actually, Miracle of All Miracles. She will actually give out this one, actually a fourth book in the series, last year. And that really came out of nowhere, really. So like, oh, 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 another book! So, so amazing. And, oh yeah, of course I read it. I bought it more or less when I came out, like, devoured it. So good. It's kind of weird to be back in this world after so long time, like, with a new material. It was fun, it was good. It wasn't amazing. It was pretty damn close. Pretty damn close to amazing. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely check this series out. Or regret for the rest of your life. And then we have... You know what? I'm gonna go with that one now. Give me a moment. So. This! Oh, the wrong way. Sorry. Uh, give me a moment. And these are the Geek Girl series. So you have the book series in itself. It's actually five books. Three, four, five. Yeah, four, five. Like, uh, can I count? Let's see. Yes, I can. Uh, and then you have. So that's like two. Well, actually, you have at least two novellas. I think maybe there are three novellas. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, maybe this. Yeah, yeah. There's actually three novellas because I've read both these, and this is a third one I haven't read. So yeah, um, and yeah, Geek Girl by Holy Smell. It's just so so good. It's a YA series, though I suppose it's kind of younger YA, like. But China, she starts at, I think she's, the first book, she's 13, maybe? Yeah, I think she's 13. And actually, in the last book, she's actually, like, 17. So, yeah, it spent some time, really. It's spent some years of her life, really. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, so, I suppose, the beginning of it reads a bit young. But it's still, like, not childish. It just kind of reads a bit young, in a way. I suppose, reads and reads. Um... It's more in a way like, even though the first, like, the f all the, the books have, like, romance in them, the first book is not like, I need a love in my life, I need a boy to be complete. It's not really like that. I feel like some books for young adults where the child is, is like 16, 17, and they're like, a boy would complete me. I need a boyfriend. I'm longing for that guy in class. It's not really like that in the series. Was, that's maybe not a valid reason to say that it's younger re younger readers intended. But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, the first, well, I suppose more or less the whole series, really, but more or less, yeah. Uh, the first a few weeks, anyway, it kind of tackles bullying, which kind of hits me right in the heart. Like, oh my god. Like, the first book has uh, pretty uh, big bullying aspects, really, both in her school life and in her other life. And I actually cried a bit reading the first book because it was so emotional. I just related so much. I was just, oh, oh my god, oh my god, no, oh, you know, it's uh, so difficult to read, but also so relatable. And these days, ah, I don't know what to feel happy that people are being bullied in books and it's relatable or sad because the bullying is awful. I don't know. And it's just so, so emotional. Um. But yeah, and just know that it also has some levity and fun parts, really. Oh, of course, or not, I would not talk about it, really. I wouldn't. Uh, it has romance, the series. And there's friendship and friendship, the friendship aspects to it. There's lots of friends stuff happening in it. Um, yeah, it's just a great, great, really story of growing up and growing older. And uh, yeah, it's just so fun. Also so quotable, so quotable, and uh, yeah, Geek Girl by Holly Smale, check it out, it's just so, so good, just amazing, it's one of my all time favorite series. I think, have I reread it many times, I suppose, I think maybe not, I suppose it's the longest series, and like, yeah, I suppose one, so, some series I tend to reread more than others, but yeah, I might reread this later this year, who knows, might be time. So, then we headed here. Then we are going to the last book series on this list. Dum bum, bum bum, ba bum. Which book series is it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose it's kind of difficult to guess. I suppose not impossible, but yeah, here it is. Girl Fire and Forts by Ray Carson. It's Girl Fire and Forts. And then you have Crown of Embers and The Bitter Kingdom. So, this trilogy. I think, yeah, I actually think this is my first high fantasy that I absolutely love, like the whole series. Like, I really enjoy Grizzling and I really enjoy uh, The Finicking of the Rock. But those, like, I don't. I absolutely love them, and this series I just absolutely love. Like all of the books, they are just so amazing. Like the first book is like, oh, huh, oh, interesting concepts. Oh, cool characters. Oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Okay. So first you introduce to a world with some rules, and then rules are broken, and then new stuff are established, and then no, that's not how it is. New stuff is established. Second book, no. That's not right either. Anything you thought you knew, it's not true. It's like, oh, oh. And then the same for the third book. It's like, oh, what? How can you do this, Ray Carson? How can you be so freaking amazing? So freaking amazing and making stories and just making stuff up and so engrossing and interesting. It's just so amazing. You have the characters, the setting, the plot, the. Honestly, honestly, yeah, honestly, this series, I have zero complaints. Zero. Because, what, what are you complaining about with this series? There's nothing to complain about. It's just so freaking amazing. It's just so, so amazing. Just, yeah, my babies, my babies. I will forever, forever be amazingly and be just so grateful to Sam for Thought on Tones for recommending these books. I suppose I might have picked him up, like, if someone else recommended it, like, like, because it was her who did it, like, Sam, Sam, you're so nice. You're the best. The best. And he's, I just, I can't thank you enough. I cannot thank you enough. And, uh, yeah. And that's... All 10 lists, 10 books of my absolute favorite series. Absolute top of the creme, top of the cream. 
Do you have any opinions on any of these books? Have you read any of them? Do you want to read any of them? Maybe you've heard of none of them? Or all of them? I don't know. Comment down below what your thoughts are. And uh, yeah, this is me, Sing Renee, out.